Hi, this is Tzvi Rosen uh, with another lecture in the Algebra and Geometry class. We're going to discuss intersection multiplicity by way of resultance. And in the last lecture, we talked about intersection multiplicity via power series. Um, and in the special case of Taylor series, so when working in the special case of, tower, of, of Taylor series, so that's where you can expand each of your curves into a function y equals a Taylor series of x. So and c2 is given by y equals b0 plus b1x, etc. Then you have um, the intersection multiplicity at 0. And we write this as I am at the point 0, 0 of C1 and C2 is given by the first index n where a n is not equal to b n. Okay, so if, for instance, the uh, the first terms are equal, that means that the value of the two of the two functions at x equals zero is the same. So the the points the functions do intersect there. So their intersection multiplicity is at least one. If, in addition, they agree in their second coefficient, so in a one, then their intersection multiplicity is at least two. All right, because that, that, that's the first place that, where they would disagree. So, so by picking up um, higher order terms in the power series where the two curves agree, you get higher intersection multiplicity. Okay, and then this can be, can be modified to fractional power series. or Puizu series when, Puizu, when no Taylor series is available, when Taylor is impossible. OK, so that's power series. But why are we still talking about intersection multiplicity? Why, why isn't Taylor series just, just an, or power series enough? Well, often computing the, the fractional power series expansion uh, is very annoying. Okay, so Puizu series hard to compute. Uh, furthermore, we uh, we discussed projective geometry in a previous lecture and how to accommodate. For instance, parallel lines that don't intersect in the plane by incorporating some points at infinity using homogeneous coordinates. So this approach doesn't take the projective geometry into account. And by this approach, I mean the power series approach doesn't appeal to projective geometry, at least not in the form that we've presented. Okay, and so an alternative approach that uh, is a lot nicer than that, that's a lot easier to compute and a lot uh, and incorporates these points at infinity is using resultants. Okay, so what is a resultant? Well, let's assume we have two polynomials, f of x and g of x, which are polynomials with coefficients in the complex numbers. Okay, there's the fundamental theorem of algebra, which tells us that. Um, each of these coefficients, each of these polynomials have degree many complex roots counted up to multiplicity. Okay, so if we denote those roots by a1 through am and b1 through bn, then the resultant is what you get when you multiply the leading coefficients of both pol polynomials by the differences between any any pair of a root of f 
and a root of g. Okay? So it's not hard to see that if it happens to be the case that any bj is equal to any ai, then this whole product is going to be 0. Um, so this, this will tell us if we ever find a way to compute a resultant, we'll be able to see, does, do these two polynomials share a root by finding that uh, the resultant is 0. Okay, fortunately, there's a really nice algorithm for computing a resultant, and it's, uh, it's the determinant of a, of a matrix called the Sylvester matrix. Okay, so again, if we have f of x equals f m x to the m plus down to f0 and g of x equals g m x to the m plus all the way down to g0, then our matrix looks like this. So we have n rows devoted to devoted to f of x. Okay, you swap the, the degrees. So the, the degree of g, I'm sorry, this should have been n. The degree of g is now paired with f to give that the number of rows. And the degree of f is devoted to g of x. And then you fill the matrix as follows. So you start with fm here, then fm minus 1, et cetera, down to f0. Okay, and then in the next row, you, you put a 0 here, and then you repeat. Okay. And continuing on, you have n copies like this each time, stepping one further so that the last row, the last column, should get this f0 term. OK. OK, and then you do exactly the same thing with g. So g gn down to g0, and then again, filling in diagonally, stepping up once each time, you get gn all the way down to g0. Um, in terms of why this works, it has to do with thinking about uh, polyn polynomial multiplication as an action on a vector space. So this matrix is looking basically at what happens when you multiply f of x and g of x separately by different polynomials and then combine them. But that's detail best, best left to another setting. OK, let's see this in practice. So we have f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 3, and g of x equals x squared minus 1. And we want to know if they have a common root. So one way to approach this is simply to take the resultant of f and g with respect to x. Okay, and that means that we check out the degrees. So the degree of both polynomials is 2. So that means this is going to be a 4 by 4 matrix. Okay, So we plug in 2 minus 5, 3, 0. And we step one up, and we have 2 minus 5, 3. And then we, so we only take two copies, since we have degree 2 in each polynomial. And in the same way, we take the coefficients of x squared minus 1, which are 1, 0, minus 1. And we have 0, 1, 0, minus 1, because you step it up one row. And now we're going to take the determinant of this matrix. Okay, And um, So row operations don't affect determinants. So I'm going to do some quick row operations on this matrix to see if we can simplify this computation. So we can get, um, we'll add twice, or minus 2 times row 3 to row 1. And you know, we'll also add minus, uh, positive 5 times row 4. Okay. 
and then we're going to add minus 2 times row 4 to row 2. And we get the determinant of so 0 in the first column, 0 in the second column. We get positive 2 from the third row, so we get 5 here. And then we get uh, minus we get positive five times row four in the in the in the fourth column. Five times minus one is minus five. Okay. As for the second row, we get zero zero minus five positive five. Okay, and these rows stay the same. Okay, and at this point, it's not hard to see that. These two rows are scalar multiples. So we learn that uh, the determinant must be 0. And what, tell, what that tells us is that these two polynomials do, in fact, have a common root. And either using graphing or, or just by factoring the polynomials, you get the root x equals 1 as a common root of these two polynomials. OK. So now we're going to get into more geometric uses of this. So we don't even need the, the, we don't need the coefficients to be complex. We can let the coefficients include variables. And that will help us solve uh, polynomial equations in two variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, Let's consider, let's consider our variable to be y, and we'll have coefficients that include x. OK. So the way that we'll write out the Sylvester matrix in this case, well, in both of these polynomials have degree 2 with respect to y. And the coefficient of y squared for f is 1. Okay, then the coefficient for y to the, one, to the first power is 0. And the coefficient of y to the, to the 0th power, meaning the terms that have no factor of y, is x squared minus 4. Okay, and then you repeat that because it's degree 2 in y. And now in the, in the second set of rows, so we, we want to get the, the uh, coefficient of y squared, which is minus 1. And there's no term of y on its own. And we have uh, x minus 1 squared minus 1 for the next coefficient, meaning the constant term with respect to y. And then we repeat again. OK, so let's pause for a second and think about what's really going on geometrically. The first expression, when polynomial f of x is 0, we're looking at the circle with radius 2. And how about the second expression? Well, that's a hyperbola, right? Because it looks it's of the form x squared minus y squared equals 1. But then it gets shifted one to the left. So it ends up looking something like this. Or actually, sorry, it, it should be shifted to the right. OK. So want to double check. So yeah, so for instance, with x equals 2 and y equals 0, both equations should be satisfied. Good. So we're, we're looking at a roughly correct graph of the situation. Uh, now let's consider this resultant. So we want to get this determinant. And what this determinant would tell us, this, is the, this will be the resultant with respect to y of f and g. And what this would tell us is that 
when the resultant is zero, the, the polynomials share a root, meaning they'll have a common solution. Okay, so by computing this determinant, I'll end up with a polynomial in x, and that when that polynomial vanishes, i.e. when we're at a root x of that polynomial, I can tell that the original polynomials also share a root, meaning there are also solutions, including a y. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to the next page to compute this determinant. And you know what, let me get a plain background. And we're going to add, we're going to do a little Gaussian elimination. We add the first row to the third row. And we add the second row to the fourth row. And what we get is 1, 1, x squared minus 4, x squared minus 4. Okay, and then 0, 0, 0, 0. And this becomes x minus 1 squared minus 1 plus x squared minus 4. So that becomes 2x squared minus 2x. Okay, the 1 minus 1 minus 4 gives us minus 4. And uh, in the final entry, we get the same thing. 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. And this gives us the following resultant. All right, because we're, we're at an upper triangular matrix, we have the determinant equal to the entries along the diagonal. So what we get is 2x squared minus 2x minus 4 squared. So let's study that polynomial a bit more. So we can take out uh, two factors of 2, so that we're looking at 4 times x squared minus x minus 2 squared. Okay, and can we factor this? Well, uh, we take x minus 2 times x plus 1 equal to x minus 2 squared times x plus 1 squared. Okay, so the resultant is 0, meaning that the two polynomials have a shared 0 with respect to y um, only if x equals minus 1 or x equals 2. In order to have a solution, to have f of xy equals g of xy, the resultant must be 0. So uh, we need x equals 2 or x equals minus 1. OK, in the case where x equals 2, we have um, we have x squared plus y squared minus 4. So that means that y squared is equal to 0. So y must be 0 uh, in, in f. And by the same token, y must be 0 in g, so we get uh, y equals, or rather both equations really tell us y squared equals 0. So the solution 0, or 2, 0 appears. And in the case x equals minus 1, both equations reduce to y squared minus 3. Okay, and you can check. Well, one of them is really um, minus y squared plus 3, but it, it amounts to the same thing. Both imply y squared equals 3. So we get the solutions 
y equals plus or minus the square root of 3 as solutions. Okay, So we'll have minus 1 root 3 and minus 1 minus root 3. Okay, and this is consistent with the picture we drew here. Okay, we have our, our single positive root here, and then these other minus 1 plus or minus root 3 roots. What about these exponents? Well, those will show up a little bit later. Uh, these, those exponents end up being the intersection multiplicity. But we, we want to be a little careful because we need to do a few things first. And that's as follows. So to compute intersection multiplicity at intersection points of f of x equals x, y equals 0 and g of x, y equals 0, the first thing you want to do is homogenize with respect to a variable z. And the idea there is to get us into projective geometry so that we don't miss any points at infinity. The next thing we do is compute the resultant of the two homogenized polynomials with respect to z. Okay, then uh, once you do that resultant, you'll get a product of powers of linear forms aix plus biy to the ni. And each of those linear factors specifies a line through the origin, which passes through an intersection point of f of xy and g of xy. And that intersection point will have intersection multiplicity ni, meaning the power that appears in the resultant. Okay, it's a lot to take in, but we'll do it step by step, and we'll do a couple of examples. So we'll see how this works. But an important warning is this doesn't work in all cases. It only works if the curves don't contain the origin. Um, which corresponds to point zero, zero, 001 in the projective plane. So once we were using z, um, that's the, the point x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 1. And if no pair of intersection points lie on the same line through the origin. If the curves break these rules, you can apply a change of coordinates to fix it, but the math gets a little more complicated, so we'll avoid those cases here. OK, so I mentioned homogenizing polynomials with respect to a variable z. And this has to do with our discussion of projective geometry. If we want polynomials to have well-defined zero sets in the projective plane, then every term needs to have the same degree. Okay, and the reason is that points in the projective plane are not affected by scaling. But if you have a polynomial where everything doesn't have the same degree, then when you scale the point, the value of the polynomial changes. Okay? And it changes in a way that's not easily predictable by scaling. It could, it could give you 0 when it starts out as non-zero. It could give you something non-zero when it starts out as 0. So just, it's just too unpredictable to really use. If, on the other hand, p of x, y, z has every term of degree d, then when you scale each of the, point, each of the coordinates by a constant lambda, then you get lambda to the d times the original value of the polynomial, right? Because you pick up a factor of lambda for, in every term, you picked up d factors. So you could just factor them all out. So the value is still 0 if you start out as 0. If we have a polynomial in x, y, in order to homogenize with respect to z, we just multiply each term by an appropriate power of z until all terms have the same degree. OK, and you only multiply so that you, you get up to the current degree of the polynomial. You don't add too many factors. Let's do an example. So here we have a polynomial of degree 4, because 2 plus 2 equals 4. So we just multiply by a uh, fact. We multiply each term by a, fact, by a power of z until its degree is 4. So the homogenized version, p of Let's give it a tilde, p of p tilde of x, y, z equals x cubed times z, because we need to have degree 4, minus y squared z squared plus x squared y squared. That's already degree 4, so we don't need to touch it. Plus x, z cubed plus, and with the 1, we multiply it by z to the fourth. OK? How about if p of x, y is x squared plus x plus y? Well, there we get p tilde of x, y, z. Since the degree is 2, we just multiply until every term has degree 2. We get x squared plus xz plus yz. OK, so that's homogenizing. 
Now let's do an example where we compute a resultant of the type that we're using to compute intersection multiplicity. So the first thing we do is homogenize. So we get f tilde of x, y, z equals x squared minus y squared minus z squared, because it's degree 2. So we multiply by a power of z to get up to 2. Then we have g tilde of x, y, z equals y squared minus x, z minus z squared. Okay. And now, we, now that we have two homogeneous polynomials in x, y, and z, we can take the resultant with respect to z of f tilde and g tilde. Okay, And this is similar to how we took it with respect to y earlier. We just look at all of the powers of z and what their coefficients are. So here, these are degree 2 in z. So if I'm going to put the f tilde first. So the coefficient of f tilde of z squared is minus 1. And then there's no z term. Then we get x squared minus y squared for the constant term. Okay, And these both are degree 2, so we repeat it. And then similarly for the next, we get minus 1 as the coefficient of z squared. And y, uh, this time we have a constant term that's minus x. Sorry, we have a degree 1 term. Z appears with minus x. And then we get y squared over here. And we can repeat that on the next row. Okay. So we could go ahead and compute the determinant using one of the standard methods. But I also want to show you that this is possible to do on, um, on the internet with a with the Symbolab uh, determinant calculator. And I'll pull that up now. Okay. So this is the uh, Symbolab matrix determinant calculator. Uh, and you can just find, you can find this by Googling Symbolab matrix determinant. And uh, I can just uh, write in all of the polynomial entries of our matrix with the determinant command. And I press go. And what I find is the determinant of this matrix, which is minus 3x squared y squared plus 4y to the fourth. Let's write down that determinant. So the resultant of, with respect to z, of f tilde g tilde is minus 3y squared, sorry, x squared y squared plus 4y to the fourth. Okay, when we factor that, we get y squared on the outside and minus 3x squared plus 4y squared. And we can factor this further. Um, this is a difference of squares, so we can get y squared times 2y plus root 3x times 2y minus root 3x. And so what this tells us is that the, the intersection point that gets hit by the line y equals 0 has a multiplicity 2. And then these two intersection points have multiplicity 1. Okay, to, to figure out exactly what those um, points are, so we take f tilde and y tilde. Sorry, f tilde and g tilde, so that's x squared minus y squared minus z squared, and y squared minus x z minus z squared. And we can plug in, well, in the first case, y equals 0. So we get x squared minus z squared equals 0. And from the second equation, we get y squared, sorry, y is 0. So we get minus xz minus z squared equals 0. This first equation factors as x plus z times x minus z equals 0. 
in the second equation factors as um, minus, a, uh, minus z times x plus z equals 0. OK, um, so the, the factor they have in common is x plus z. So the point, projective point, where uh, we have that these two equations are 0 is the point where x equals minus z. So we're going we're gonna to fix z to be 1, because then we're looking at our standard plane. So we have x equals minus 1, y equals 0, and z equals 1. So this corresponds to the point minus 1, 0 in the plane. Okay. As for the other two points, so we have 2y plus root 3x. So when 2y plus root 3x, so that equals 0. That means that. Um, Let's say y equals minus root 3x over 2. Okay, And so we can plug that into both equations, and we get f tilde equals 3x squared over 4. So we have x squared over 4 minus z squared. And g tilde is 3 over 4 x squared minus xz minus z squared. Okay, factoring the first polynomial is a difference of squares. So we get x over 2 plus z times x over 2 minus z equals 0. Okay, And now, uh, so that we don't have to uh, factor another quadratic here, uh, we can just look at what, what can we plug in for x in g tilde of these two possible solutions. So this is uh, x plus 2z and x minus 2z equals 0 after scaling. So if we plug in x equals 2z, we get 4z squared. So we get 3z squared in the first place minus uh, 2z squared minus z squared. So if we have x equal to 2z, so this, this linear relation, then we get a solution to g tilde also. Okay, so this point corresponds to 0. So, so uh, we know that 2y plus root 3x equals 0 and x minus 2z equals 0. So if we choose z to be 1, then x equals 2, and y is equal to minus root 3. Okay, so that's the projective point, 2 minus root 3, 1. Okay, and very similar process will get you the point corresponding to the other linear equation. Okay, and in terms of multiplicity, y equals 0 is the only point of multiplicity 1, so that means that the point minus 1, 0, 1 is the only intersection point with multiplicity 2. And the other points have multiplicity 1. Okay, let's do one more quick example. So this is kind of interesting because we have two circles here. This has radius 1, and the other one has radius 2. So looking at them, we don't think they should intersect, at least not in standard geometry. But let's see what happens when we put that there. Let's see what happens.
when we uh, carry out this resultant process. So we get x squared plus y squared minus z squared for f tilde. And g tilde gives us x squared plus y squared minus 4z squared. Okay, and then we get our determinant of, uh, so we're taking the resultant with respect to z of f tilde and g tilde, and we get minus 1, 0, x squared plus y squared. Okay, similar to what we've seen so far, minus 1, 0, x squared plus y squared. And in the second place, we have minus 4, 0, x squared plus y squared, 0, and minus 4, 0, x squared plus y squared. OK, what happens when we take the determinant? Well, we can do a little Gaussian elimination first, as we did before. So we can multiply minus 4 by row 1 and add it to row 3. And similarly for row 2 to add to row 4. And what do we get? So when we do that, we get 0 here and minus 3 times x squared plus y squared. And we get 0 here and minus 3 times x squared plus y squared here. Okay. And then the resultant, just the determinant of this matrix, because it's upper triangular, is just the, uh, multiple, it's the product of the diagonal entries, so we get 9 times x squared plus y squared squared. OK, so you might say, hey, this is a, a sum of squares. It's an irreducible quadratic. So how can, I mul how can I factor this into linear factors? Well, a sum of squares is a difference of squares if you're working in the complex numbers. So this is equal to 9 times x plus iy x minus iy each squared, okay? And what this eventually leads to is that our solution points are, um, well, we're going to require that z equals 0, because otherwise these, these two equations are inconsistent. And then we'll have 1i0. Uh, and 1 minus i0, uh, where i is the, the square root of negative 1. And uh, both of these have multiplicity 2. OK, so this, give, this has given you a little bit of an introduction to what a resultant is, how it can be used to see when two polynomials in one variable have a common root, and then how you can extend that to apply to multiple variables and uh, to look in, at, at how it works in projective geometry um, in, and how it gives you intersection multiplicity. And so we'll wrap this all up into a package in the next lecture with um, a summary of Bayes' theorem and some ways to apply it. Thanks. <laughs>